In this video, I'm going to document one of my favorite Facebook live streaming setup using two video capture devices and OBS. Yes, perfect. Okay, today's setup is most satisfactory. Let me document it. I have been experimenting with various kinds of multi-camera live streaming setup. And this is one of my most successful so far. Especially when it comes to Facebook live streaming with my old 2013 MacBook Pro. Let me show you the hardware setup and most importantly, the software settings. First of all, you are looking at the main camera coming from the Sony camcorder. This camcorder is an old model. Check out the links below for my new recommendation. The camera is connected via a HDMI cable through the HDMI output. The HDMI cable goes all the way into this video capture device. This is the Blackmagic Design Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. The HDMI signal from the camcorder goes into the HDMI input and the output is a Thunderbolt signal. And the Thunderbolt signal goes goes through a Thunderbolt cable into my Thunderbolt input port of the old 2013 MacBook Pro. The new MacBook Pros now only have uh, USB-C ports and you will need a Thunderbolt adapter if you're going to use the mini recorder. I'll leave the link down below as to where you can get the Thunderbolt to USB-C adapter. All right, now the next camera. Let me show you camera two. This is the Panasonic mirrorless camera. It's looking over my shoulder to do my tutorial or demonstration. And it's got a HDMI output, which is connected to a HDMI cable right now. And that goes into this video capture device. It's the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle USB version. So what it does is the HDMI goes in here and it converts into a USB signal, the blue cable, and that in turn go into the MacBook Pro, the USB port of the MacBook Pro. On a side note, if you notice, it doesn't only have HDMI input, it also has analog inputs, composite and component. Okay, meaning that if you have old videos, you can use this to convert them or rather digitize them. Okay, I'll do that in another video if you're interested. Let me know. And then there is a third camera that is the built-in webcam on my MacBook Pro, which you can see over here. And then I have an external monitor or rather a second monitor connected to the HDMI output of the MacBook Pro. I'm operating in a two monitor live streaming setup. There's two more things in the hardware setup. The MacBook Pro right now is connected to the internet via ethernet cable, not Wi-Fi. And it's also connected to an external SSD drive. I'm using the Samsung 250 gigabyte T3, the older version, okay, to record my live streams like this. So now let's talk about the software. As I mentioned, we are my MacBook Pro is connected directly to the internet via cable. Before I went live, I tested the speed. So I'm connected to a optical fiber broadband and my download speed is 142 Mbps. Upload speed, 149 Mbps. Next, the most important part, the software. I'm using OBS open broadcasting software. What I'm going to show you here is the important settings. I've set up a scene called Sony Main Cam, which is connected to my Sony camcorder, as you can see right now. So I've selected Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini Recorder as a device, and I've set the resolution to 1920 times 1080, frame rate 30. I didn't touch this, as in Input format is auto, color space is auto. Next, let's talk about camera two, which is the Panasonic mirrorless camera under 
Panasonic close-up cam and I'm going to show you the settings as a screenshot. Under video capture device, I've set up the device as Blackmagic Intensity Shuttle. Again, an unchecked preset and set the resolution to 1920x1080 frame rate at 30 frames per second, the rest automatic. And for this scene, this scene you're watching right now has got two sources. One, if you look below here, one uh, display capture, which is the computer screen you're seeing right now. If I can point to you, computer screen. And a video capture device, which is the face cam, which is the webcam built into the MacBook Pro. Okay, for this, I use the preset. And for the dis display capture, what I've set is display zero, show cursor, crop none. That means I capture the whole desktop. Now comes finishing soon, comes to settings over here on the right hand side. Settings. I'm gonna run through run through this very quickly. Okay, nothing important here except output. I've set activated or checked automatically record when streaming. So whenever I go streaming, it automatically records to the external hard drive, which is the SSD drive. Okay, the rest is not important. Then when it comes to streaming. This is a standard, you need to get a streaming key from Facebook to, to stream to Facebook Live. And for output, this is where it's totally different from my previous setup. This time I've set up to advanced. Okay, the same thing I did when I was doing this for client project. And then I abandoned it for something simpler, but advanced is so much easier now. So let's take a look at advanced streaming. Okay, encoder is the one that I've discovered works very well. I've set it to Apple VTH264 hardware encoder, so which means I'm using the GPU right now. Previously, I wasn't using GPU, so there was a lag and delay in this external camera outputs. So again, once again, once again I stress, this is the important thing that I've changed compared to the previous setup, which didn't work. Output I set to full HD, 1920x1080, bit rate 2500 kbps, I may experiment propping this up to a higher value in the next few streams. Okay, and then next, under the recording tab, this is what goes into my SSD solid state drive, my external recording device. Okay, recording path is the Samsung T3. Okay, recording format, MKV. Okay, instead of MP4 or MOV, I set to MKV because if the stream stops or if, if anything stops suddenly, you will still have your video file stop recording and you can still retrieve it but if you record in mov or mp4 if anything were to stop suddenly the whole recording will be corrupted that means you can't even retrieve it happened to me many times okay so i'm not going to make that mistake again for obs live streaming set it to set the recording format to mkv mkv is just a container to contain your mp4 or mov format okay after which you can use obs to convert back into MP4. Okay, and for encoder, I use the stream encoder, the same one that we set up just now under the streaming tab, so that I won't stress out my processor to do two encodings at the same time. So we'll just use one encoding for both streaming and recording. Audio, I didn't do anything. Replay buffer, I didn't do anything. Now under the audio settings, we have sample rate at 44.1 kilohertz, channel stereo, I only have two audio channels activated. There's a desktop audio where you can hear my YouTube playing and the built-in microphone, okay, which is the one I'm wearing right now. It's supposed to be external mic. Okay, the rest, if I scroll down, let's see, there's nothing else here. I didn't set anything. They're all default. So under the video setting tab, base resolution is full HD, output resolution, full HD, downscale filter is bilinear, which is the fastest processing. That means blurry if there's movement. Frame rate, 30 frames per second. Hotkeys, I didn't set anything. In future, I'm going to set so I can set camera one, camera two, screen. Advanced, okay, there's something to take note here. Color format, MV12, color space, 709, color range, partial, and the two settings below, unchecked. Then comes the recording, okay, this is the important part. 
I checked, automatically remarks to MP4. That means the MKV format video that we recorded just now will be automatically converted to MP4 after I end my live stream. And then I will check enable to automatically reconnect if there is a disconnect. Okay, other than that, there's one more here I haven't point pointed out. The animated banner with music. I, I will go to that in a short while. Check out my other videos for different kinds of live streaming setup. If you like this video, click the thumbs up. Share this video with your friends. And if you haven't done so, subscribe! And now, to end this video, let me show you the animated banner with music. Ready? Go. This is Adrian Lee from videolane.com. See you in the next one.